What is going on, everyone? And welcome back to Cart 63. I am Ben, the uh, the host, because again, it's my channel. I get to be the host of that stuff. Uh, I thought we would talk about uh, durometers today. How's that sound? Pretty good. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna come come up and close and show you what it looks like to actually use a durometer. I have both digital and I have analog here. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking since we got our very first uh, measurable snow today here in New York, at least in Western New York, um, that the durometer readings are gonna be slightly higher today. Uh, being a, everything out here in the barn is pretty darn cold, but I wanted to do it anyway, just regard, you know, for anybody who has never used the durometer before, I wanted to show you what I do in order to, uh, you know, get, get a general idea how soft or hard your tire. So uh, we'll do some close up action. And then I'll come up and I'll uh, I'll do a conclusion for you, and then we'll see you in the next video. All right, catch you in a minute. Okay, everyone, here we are. We are dove down. Uh, this is going to be kind of interesting. Trying to operate the durometers around uh, what I record on is my cell phone. So I'm looking at the backside of my uh, cell phone right now, and the image uh, being shot down on the star. This is a Vega Yellow. Uh, M MCS, I believe, is the uh, is the code on that. Never mind the level here uh, that I have in front of the tire. It's just to keep the tire from rolling away on me. All right, and like I said, it is awfully cold out here. So when I'm doing this, it's going to read a lot higher than normally would on a Vega tire. These things punch somewhere in between 45 and 50, brand new, sometimes 55, but usually in the 45 to 50 range. So all right, here we have our uh, our long acre. This is our analog durometer. Uh, like I said, I've had this for a long time. Usually there's a, a, a thing on top. It's been gone for a long time and I can't tell you where it is. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna take this probe and you're just gonna, you're gonna push it down. Now, one thing I will say this, do not check the durometer tire if it is A, blown up too much. If you're say stretching the tire, Say you got 50 pounds in it, whatever, you're trying to grow a tire, don't check uh, hardness of your tire then. Or if your tire is completely flat, don't check the hardness there. It just, it won't give you an adequate uh, reading here. In this tire, I got five pounds in there right now, just for reference point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this on here and I'm just gonna push down. So like I said, it's cold out here. This thing's reading 70. Then you're just gonna, you're gonna go across the board you're gonna go across the tire, get different readings, okay, 70, 70. And then you can also rotate the tire, like if it's by chance on your cart when you're doing this, there's that. So this is what most people have is the analog durometer. Um, now, if you have a little extra money, you can get yourself a digital one. All right, this is the digital uh, long acre uh, you have. Hardness, you have zero on and off, so you can touch this, that turns it off, turn it back on. Okay, say that it was reading something, just go ahead and zero it. And here's the uh, the thing I was talking about that's missing on the other one. So this, come in, push down, and give you a reading. Push down, and it'll give you a reading. Now, <clears throat> I've heard some people say roll it on. I've heard some people just go straight up and down. I go straight up and down and see now it's reading 0.5. It's a, probably because it's cold out here and it's the, the needle's a little sticky. So I'd, I'd try and zero it if it'll zero. There we go. <laughs> and uh, then go go back about doing this. So uh, I'd rotate your tire, you know, whatever uh, prep you have in. Um, uh, I, you, you know, try and make sure your tire's dry uh, if you're using prep. Uh, please make sure it's dry because this little orifice in here can get gunked up with stuff and then they don't operate that well. And obviously this digital one gets a little sticky when it's this cold out, but we're, you know, it just snowed here in New York. So we're talking about, uh, at least 32 degrees outside. So, <laughs> all right, I'll, uh, I'll catch you back up, up top in here in a second. Okay, here we are back up top. Uh, just a brief description on how to use a durometer, what, what you're looking for when you use a durometer. Again, super cold outside. Everything is reading 70 plus on the durometer. This tire does not read that under normal uh, circumstances. So when you're, you're doing that, again, 
Make sure your tire pressure is set correctly, that it isn't deflated, isn't overinflated. You know, if you're <laughs> all of a sudden you're getting a really high reading on a tire, you know that's supposed to be soft. Maybe you have too much air in it that you were trying to grow the tire. Now, um, the the tire durometers for tracks, typically a wet soft track is going to take a wet soft tire. A hard packed track, whether it be dry and dusty, whether it be uh, dirt fall, you know, down south, you're going to want a, hot, a, a higher read tire. So you're gonna want that 65, 70. You're gonna want a, a nice hard tire to you know, go against the amount of grip. It's, it's just, the harder the tire is, uh, yes, it takes a little bit to come in, but it's gonna wear less and it's gonna grip the surface better. Now, that is not always the case. I have been on softer tracks that do not take a softer tire. You want to run something slightly harder, and that is really just an experience thing. You have to go to certain tracks, uh, you know, get gain knowledge from locals about what works there, what does not. So it is, it's a rule of thumb that soft track, soft tire, hard track, hard tire, but not always the case. Sometimes you will find that a slightly softer tire than you would think will work better on a, uh, you know, on a softer track. It's it's very hard to describe even even more difficult to master that. And uh, I am no master, believe me. <laughs> so, all right, very simple, very easy. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, drop them down in the comments. Uh, if you guys didn't mind, hit a like. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel if you found this information uh, was helpful to you. Uh, and I appreciate everybody that's, uh, the, the, the numbers have come up on my channel a bunch. People are watching it, and I really do appreciate you guys stopping by, and I hope, that, you know, I'm doing some good, uh, you know, 20 years experience in this. Like I said, I'm no professional, but I got a head full of a junk that I thought I could put on video for people and maybe help a new kart racer out, explain some basics, maybe get into some other stuff. But uh, UAS stuff coming, uh, hopefully. We have a, a new chassis uh, on order, so I'm kind of hoping to, do you know, do some some putting together of a new chassis, get that on film. There's all sorts of stuff, but <laughs> I don't think it's going to be anytime soon with that. Uh, and then hopefully winter doesn't get too bad. I can be out here. I never know. You know, pretty soon you're going to be able to see my breath pretty good. So I'll do videos as long as I can. But until next time, guys, thank you very much for stopping by and uh, go, uh, go race. Have fun. See you later.